Did you watch uh, uh, Sean Brady against Chiesa at the weekend? I did. Fucking hell. I was frustrated. Was you? Yeah, because I now have a... The problem is, because I've met Michael Chiesa, I now feel affiliated to Michael Chiesa because he was a lovely dude. Yeah. And obviously, we've sent him some stuff. We had a wicked chat with him. We've seen him a few other times. I've text, We've texted back and forth. Mm -hmm. So now it's almost like a friend. Yeah. Now you're in there with him, aren't you? Then that's the problem. Because it's like with Stefan, when obviously me and Stefan were friends when he was fighting, it was difficult. Even when you fought, when you fought and I'm sat in the fucking stands and you're fighting Sadala, it's weird because it's an uncomfortable thing because it doesn't matter. You could have been playing tennis or anything, but you you support someone else and you kind of want to either take over or be involved or do, but mm -hmm. you can't do anything. Can't do anything. And when Chiesa, he's, he's had this amazing like career and rise. And obviously, even when you look at the ultimate fighter, to go out there with your friend, to lose your father, to go through everything he went through, to capitalize and still do what he said he was going to do. So as much as the heartbreak of his dad, it was justified to a degree because he's looked what he's, he's achieved. And then for the wins that he's got over people like Condit and, and other people, he's he's really stepped up. But then it's like he's got slightly stifled in the last two. I mean, obviously, Luke was just, it was, he said he was over committing. But I think he looked better, mm. but it, there was still a point where, like I've said before, it's hard to watch a fight and watch both people. Yeah. It's really difficult yeah, because yeah, you yeah. always follow someone naturally. You have to watch a fight twice, at least. So as much as obviously I'm invested in Mike, I want him to win. It's difficult to not watch both. And sometimes you can convince yourself, yeah, the judges could give it him. But unfortunately, it gets to a point then where you're like, nah, this is gone. It's a bit like Misha. Yeah, yeah. There was stuff that she did that you're like, well, fair enough. Yeah, you could, you could, you could. And then before you know it, once you've been dominated for at least two rounds, yeah. you're like, yeah. That's... Did you watch David Grant? I did. That was a hell of a Incredible. fight, wasn't it? Yeah, Yanez is a good, a good scrapper, a good fighter. But it, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was it was really close. Stats were close and everything. But like, I mean, obviously, Yanez was being a bit more effective with his striking, did more damage, like visibly damaged. And but, elusive. Yeah. It, that's what Ollie was talking about with his head movement. Yeah. It's a lot like Robbie Law, like slipping and rolling stuff. Yeah. So stuff that Davy Grant might have felt like he was landing a pretty clean with, kind of like with Connor and Nate. Yes. Like he pitched that left hand over and over again, and it was kind of glancing off the side of yeah. his head or his shoulder. Exactly. Not really landing with the with the, the same kind of weight. Which I, I think that's the difficult thing because we, unfortunately, you kind of get used to a level of judging. Like if they took every single judge out of the MMA world and replaced it with a new system, which is 99% the same, but they acknowledge the fact of a takedown being stuffed or someone's head movement or, or evasive movement, if that was judged... Because it can be effective. Look mm. at Connor against, well, pretty much anyone because he's a, he's a counter puncher. There's a lot of elements like with Eddie Alvarez where he's getting out of the way. Mm. So he's not necessarily attacking or may, doing any damage, but he's putting himself in a better position. Whereas I don't think all judges necessarily look at that and go, yeah. fuck me, that's as good as a strike. Yeah. So, well, the thing is, so the, the way that it's, it's considered, and I like the way that Mark Goddard puts it, is defense is its own reward. Yeah. So if, you, if, if you're if you slipping and rolling and, and putting yourself in situations, then you're benefiting by being in those situations. Like, I, I, think, I think sometimes, and my concern is that judges see it the opposite way. So they don't see you rolling the shots, they see you taking the shots. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think, like, like sometimes I'll watch a fight and I'll get it will get to the end and I'll be like... I think this one's going to be a split decision, yeah. which means that I think one of the judges is not going to see the fight the same. You know yeah. what I mean? They're not going to, they're, they're, they're missing something. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, I feel like this person's won, but I feel like one of the judges yeah. is at least going to see easy the other way. It's easy to see. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think a lot of that can be down to, I mean, everyone can get distracted. It, de it depends on what you're watching. Like you only have to look away for a very split second. Mm. Like the amount of times everyone in the world that has watched MMA as as Mr. Oh my God, like a big moment because you literally looked away for a second. Yeah. So as a judge, it's a really difficult thing. Like they, it's like they almost need every single angle, but for a person to watch every single angle is impossible. Yeah. But when you've got someone like Davey going forward, part of that momentum is carrying a split vote for him. Mm. Whereas the technical element of his opponent is what's winning it for him. So it's, it's kind of, picking your poison of it because yeah. 
we everyone won. That fight was gold. It was a bit like um, Gagey and Chandler. I, I honestly, to, for me, I was watching more Gagey because I'm a I'm a bigger fan of Gagey. Mm. But I, I do respect Chandler and I love watching him. But because I like Gagey more, I'm more I'm waiting watching, for that. I'm watching yeah, his right yeah, hand. Yeah. Whereas it's the same as like if if you're watching a like if you're watching Yaya Rodriguez in Mexico City. Yeah. Like the crowd are always going to peak when he does something, even if he's not actually exactly. landing anything. You know what I mean? It's like a, like like people are, are waiting on one person to deliver something. Usually, it's very rare that you get a like even even fights where it's really you know really back and forth, like Felder against Dan Hooker. Yes, like I, you you just don't know. And this is the, this is Rogan's argument about um, noise cancelling headphones and stuff, or having them in in a room away from the fights. I think it's beneficial for the judge to be sitting octagon side and to have the screen in front of them. But <clears throat> most of the time they're watching the fight and they've got a specific angle, which nobody else has got. They're seeing things that nobody else is seeing. Okay. It's a very unique perspective. Like, I noticed the difference. Like I'm, I'm commentating from the fight that I'm watching in front of me and from the screen that everybody else is seeing. It's different. It's, it's sometimes different. Yeah. Sometimes you're seeing a punch, a shot land cleaner or a position that looks stronger or weaker than another, you know, there's, <clears throat> it, it's, it is difficult, but like at the same time as the judge, even if a judge watching Felder and Hooker is absolutely tuned in and focused on this fight, the the volume of the crowd in the background yeah. every time Hooker lands something, it goes whoa. And yeah. It's like like how much is that swaying like subconsciously? It's got to be. It's got to be. I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm just using that fight as an example Completely. because it was a a close one where the crowd obviously were invested in Hooker winning. Yeah, but it's it's how things can be misinterpreted. Yeah. Or there's there's so many elements that affect the fighter massively, and I think sometimes I I I, I massively think that the judges should be fighters. Mm. There's enough of you guys now, from '93 to now, that have got a decent head on your shoulders. You know what you're looking at. You yeah. know what you're doing. You're constantly thinking about it and and, and living this sport. Like Rich Franklin, mm. Randy, all these people. Yeah. I'm not saying they want to sit and be a judge, but they That's can the coach. They there can are train. plenty of guys that weren't Randy Couture exactly. or Rich Franklin that, yeah. that uh, you know can find a place on a commission in their local state or yeah. whatever. Like like there should be a program maybe in the UFC where if you come in towards retirement and you can you know like Brian Kelleher for example, Perfect. stick your name down, get judging training, get referee in training. Yeah. You could be a cutman training something that keeps you within because the sport. you know you know too much when, once you've seen yeah. behind the curtain you organically you know learn too much. yeah you organically <laughs> learn so much yeah. and it's it's one of them things that it, it can't be taught so yeah. like there's there's so many bits but i think it would be interesting to have the joe rogan option of if we've got three judges mm. octagon side and we call that the og so that's yeah. the normal normal way that they do it but then they had three more judges in a in a in a silent room watching the same angle with no um, preconceived ideas, anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and see who's got, if they score it all exactly the same yeah. or if you can tell, okay, cause this person came out, it got a bigger pop or whatever. Yeah. Like when Faber had his, his head, head shaved because in the Dominic Cruz fight, he felt that he was losing points because his head was moving and his hair was long right. and it was looking like he was being punched, which I've got to be honest, I think Faber lost the fight. But yeah. at the same time, there could be something in it if it was a split because why didn't someone else give it him? Like, like if you're watching if you're watching Clay Guido and you're watching from behind in a punching exchange Jesus. and you see him doing this, you might think it's, he's taking those it's shots. It's constant. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, like I think I've mentioned this to you before, but in, in the Marcus Davis fight, there was a judge sat behind me um, as, at the start of the third round where I threw a low kick and Davis caught my yeah. ankle and I, I fell over. But the judge behind thought it was a knockdown, yeah, and that influenced the scoring of and that then round. And that's a split, you know, yeah. But that the, it's it's difficult because the problem is you're not getting five minutes in between. Mm. It's like what's the rule at the minute? If they use the replay, then the fight's over. No, that's changed now. It Have changed. They stopped that. Yeah, but it, I, it was kind of it was kind of weirdly changed. It wasn't like a like an open discussion. It was after uh, remember when Jesse Jess needs was it Sarah Alpar? Yeah. And there was the question around whether she was actually like her ass was touching the floor. Oh, okay. And the I think the was it Martin um, um, to Chris Tyone. I think I think he didn't use replay because it wasn't allowed then. And I think he looked up at the screen and saw and then kind of 
restart the fight. It okay. was a bit of a, a bit of a messy situation. Now they have somebody on the outside, an official that can watch the watch the footage back and then advise. So like there was a, a good example is Adam's last fight on Cage Warriors. Oh yeah, with when the, he was yeah, fighting yeah, yeah. Uh, Martin Yoni, which is why I almost said that name. Um, so they, I'm 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 in Adam's corner. Uh, Rich Mitchell was refereeing. Dan Moverhead was on the outside, so he was the official watching the replays oh, okay. so and stuff. He's responsible. And as this exchange happened, Adam threw a low kick and he posted his hand out, and one of his fingers caught the inside of Martin Yoni's eye, and it cut him. Okay. Now, when when I first watched it on the first replay, I thought to myself gone. that his hand was closed and that the um and that the cut was from the the knuckles. Yeah. In which case, obviously, it would have been a TKO win. But then as they, as they played the replay and Moverhead, he saw at the other angle, he was like, no, it was a finger. And then they played that up on the big screen and oh, you could right. see it was it was most likely going to be going to be his finger extended. But I, they're good circumstances. I think they always should have a person on the outside Without watching the thing. And they can restart the fight now. It used to only be in fight ending sequences to determine what the decision was, whether it was a, oh, a no okay. contest or a disqualification or whatever else. Because but now they can. Well, it's there's strange rules, though, isn't there? It's like when Stefan was being, when he got, did he take three nut shots? Yeah. And big and Dan, was it Dan? Dan Mergliotta. Yeah. And he said, look, if I stop the fight now, You've yeah. lost. Yeah. But if it goes, if you get to the end of this round, I think there was a minute left in the second, something like that. Yes. Yeah. If, if you get to the end of this one, uh -huh. then then it's a, and you're like, what? Well, hold on. Yeah. I've just been hoofed in the sack <laughs> three times by a tall dude. Yeah. And but the thing is, he knew in that moment that if he took a point, then he was influencing the scores. And then, then you go down to the conversation of only three rounds and only the ten point must system and only one point deductions and there's loads of little things that could be fixed. Like I, th I think something where they do, like if you poke somebody in the eye twice, whether it's both accidental or not, like is something. A point? Yeah, it's got to be. Well, it's going to make, it's gonna make this. Yeah. 